Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Dr. Silesh Rao, founder of Climate Healers. Today, we're going to talk about climate change. So Silesh, tell us about Climate Healers and how you became interested in climate change. Well, thank you, Grace, for having me on the show. I um, started working on climate change back in 2005 when I saw Al Gore's presentation on TV, and I was so shocked. I said, if half of what he's saying is true, I'm wasting my time working on making the internet go 10 times faster. So that's <laughs> how I started, you know. And the more I looked into it, the more I realized it's actually a far worse problem than uh, than even what Mr. Goh was saying. Um, because it's it impacts all of us, it impacts our lifestyles, it impacts our entire system, the way we organize ourselves. So it's a complete system transformation is what's called for. So I started Climate Healers in 2007 in order to uh, figure out how to heal the climate as opposed to you know maintaining it in the current state of disrepair that it's in. So uh, so it's think of it think of it as you know. Uh, patient with a chronic disease or fever and a cancer and heart disease and so on, going to a doctor and the, you know, uh, asking what is it that I need to do in order to completely heal myself, right? And it so requires you to change your lifestyle, right? Yeah, yeah. What's your proposal of how we heal climate change? Well, you can heal the climate by basically um, using, I mean, getting nature to be on our side as opposed to fighting nature. So it's a it's a rather simple idea um, because it's being in harmony with nature and using nature, harnessing nature's power to actually reverse climate change. Uh, and I think it can be done, you know. But it requires us to transform our lifestyles to get there. So and, how do you propose that we do that? I guess. <laughs> oh, how do you propose that we transform our lifestyles? Uh, it's actually, uh, it's driven by the grassroots. So if the grass, you know, it turns out that the food system is one of the most uh, powerful levers we have on uh, transforming the lifestyles. So when we change our food system or when we start demanding the right kinds of foods, the system has no choice but to follow us. Okay, so it's really up to us. It's up to each individual. Yeah, we all have the power to heal the climate. I say that the planet has 8 billion potential climate healers uh, or climate heaters. It's up to us to choose whether you want to be a climate heater or a climate healer. Mm -hmm. right. And how do you propose, what, what kind of food do you propose that people should seek to heal the planet? Yeah, it, it turns out that the food that heals our body is also the food that heals the climate. It's so beautiful, right? So nature is such a perfect system design, actually. And uh, so if you all, if we all start consuming whole food, plant-based uh, vegan meals, then literally the, the planet will start healing as well. As we heal our bodies, the planet will start healing as well. So, so in that sense, you know, everything is in perfect alignment. You know, so how does a plant-based diet heal the planet better than an animal-based or just, you know, standard American diet, I guess I should say? Yeah. So uh, right now, you know, 85% of the food we eat is already plant-based. Okay. Uh, it's making it close to 100%. That's what's going to heal the planet. And the, the way it does that is for the remaining 15% of the food that we get from animal sources today, we are literally using 80% of the Earth's surface. So for 12% of the food, which comes from land animals, we are using 37% of the land area of the planet just to graze the animals, and another 6% to grow the crops to feed those animals. And then for the remaining 3% of the food we eat, we are literally destroying the entire ocean. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing you know, what we do to the ocean just to get 3% of our food. Yeah. So this is why if we go 100% plant-based, and uh, then you will release uh, not only about 40% uh, of the land area of the planet back to nature, you'll also release the entire ocean back to nature. And so when you leave things alone, nature starts healing. Okay. In fact, you can just calculate based on how much uh, vegetation 
is currently being eaten by animals. You know, and you say, if that vegetation had been left alone, how much CO2 would have been sequestered by, by land, you know, by nature alone? And that itself tells us that uh, going vegan, uh, going whole food plant-based especially, will um, basically has the potential to reverse climate change. So how about when you say 3% of the food we get, are you saying the 3% of the food we're getting is seafood or what yeah. kind of, how is that, what exactly is impacting the ocean when you say 3% of our food? So 3% of our food by dry weight. So uh, the the oh. UN, you know, basically when it calculates uh, how much of the food is coming from different sources, they take out all the water from the food and just mm -hmm. weigh the dry, you know, the dry food. And so based on the dry weight of the food we consume, 3% is coming from the ocean, which is basically seafood, you know, fish and um, um, shrimp and things like that. And uh, for that 3%, we are actually dredging the bottom of the ocean over like 4 billion acres of the ocean floor every year. Uh, and it's becoming harder and harder to catch the fish. So we now use... Um, big data software and GPS hardware technologies to find the last remaining fish in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And then all the ships go and congregate over there and drag it from the ocean floor. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, we are really destroying the ocean. That's what I mean, you know, for just that 3% of the food. Because we have a tendency to think that once someone starts eating something, they have a right to keep eating that. Mm -hmm. And then the corporations have a right to do whatever they need to get that food to the person who wants it, right? There is no education. There is, I mean, we don't even tell people, look, it's really hurting you. It's hurting the planet. It's of course hurting the fish. Uh, and you know, once you wipe out all the fishes in the ocean, we are going to be dead too. So it's that it's a suicidal act that we are pursuing right now. You know, this uh, this idea that uh, uh, whatever. Um, is demanded by human beings have to be somehow met. <laughs> so how do, I mean, how does someone like you convince the rest of the world that they should not be eating fish or, you know, they don't have a right to chop down all the trees in Brazil mm -hmm. or more, right. you know, cows? I mean, they see that as their right. Well, they, they may see that as their right, but there are a lot of young people who are beginning to see through this and they are already waking up. Uh, the rate at which young people are going vegan is, is astronomical right now. You know, so you can do a survey of cafeterias in, uh, in universities and colleges and you will see that the rise of veganism is almost unprecedented how mm -hmm. fast it's happening. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, we don't have to get 100% of the people to go vegan for the entire industry to collapse. Okay, yeah. so the collapse, I'm looking for, you know, what we need What we need to do to get the system that is currently um, destroying the planet to actually fold itself down, you know, so that then people look for alternatives when something like that happens, right? So, and the alternatives are there. So this is why we have a new initiative called Food Healers. We are, we are trying to educate people on how food heals our bodies and heals the climate. And, uh, and then we are saying, you know, we'll, we will start handing out free healthy food to people, okay, uh, as part of this uh, education process. Mm -hmm. So this way, um, we can spread the word quicker. So right. your organization is essentially funding the food healers or do you get sponsors that provide the food or how is it working? Are there volunteers that cook the food? Right. So we have volunteers that cook the food. We have uh, we basically appeal to uh, communities to come together and do this on their own. So it's not like we are you know, collecting funds and giving it to people and saying, go do it, you know, because people already have that motivation of healing themselves and uh, healing their communities, mm -hmm. right? So, so it becomes a distributed, uh, decentralized, localized um, food service um, enterprise, right? So, so we, are, we are basically giving them the materials that they need, the information that they need to understand why they should be doing this so that they can go and talk to their friends and family and their neighbors and uh, start this process off, right? Um, so I see that 
you know, I, I see the parallel with what Gandhi was trying to do with the clothing movement in India in the early 20th century when he convinced the people of India to change their clothes from, uh, you know, industrially milled clothes in England to hand-woven clothes in India. And uh, by doing that, he put enough pressure on the, the uh, textile industry in England that it collapsed, you know, within 12 years. And that was then, you know, it was at that point that the British government came and negotiated with Gandhi, right? And the second round, the first round table conference, the second round table conference and all that happened because of that clothing movement, the Khadi movement that he started. I see this uh, food healers as a similar undertaking where we have to put pressure on these people who have the power, who are actually subsidizing these fishing industries to go and destroy the ocean. <laughs> who are subsidizing the animal agriculture industry to go and destroy the planet. And um, we need to put pressure on them to stop it because they are literally killing us with this um, undertaking. And so how do you do that? Well, we need to start handing out free food to people, healthy food to people. And it's, you know, it's basically embracing people with love, right? And that will allow, um, I mean, as people buy less and less of the animal products, then that industry will collapse, okay. right? And uh, people, I mean, the governments will then start getting pressure from citizens saying, why are you subsidizing that? Mm -hmm. We should be subsidizing our health as opposed to our diseases. Yeah. So it's kind of getting the word out about, educating people about climate change, getting the word out about how animal products cause disease that will right. help people, you know, and then from people not supporting the industry and people writing to their legislator, hopefully change will happen. So have you at all been in contact with legislators or that's not really what the angle you're going at or? I'm more focusing more on, uh, on grassroots approaches. And uh, I mean, we do talk to um, local governments and mm -hmm. getting them on board. Uh, and churches, you know, temples, getting them on board. So the temples have been very, very responsive. Oh. You know, um, so we just finished World Food Healers Day. Uh, that was Saturday. Oh, nice. And so, yeah, we had uh, people participating from all over the world. You know, we had from Ghana to oh, wow. Peru to, you know, Perth, Australia to India. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, Delhi, we had uh, almost 100,000 meals served wow. in Delhi. So the idea wow. is to, you know, give out healthy food and people feel good when they eat healthy food, they right? Yes. And uh, uh, and give it away for free. Mm -hmm. And they ask you, why are you giving it away for free? And then you tell them, you know, we need a food system in which healthy food is free. Mm -hmm. you know, it should be a basic human right to have healthy food. Whereas right now we have a food system in which animal foods, which are unhealthy foods, that are being subsidized by our governments and is being pushed into our school children, you know, um, and which I think is uh, child abuse, really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not fair that children aren't given options, better options that are better for their health, because when you're a child, that kind of what kind of food you're given when you're a child kind of solidifies your tastes and then right. when you're you know when you grow up you're used to that kind of food so it's a tragedy that people aren't given healthy food when they're a child and they have all these dairy products and everything and right. sodas and it's just unfortunate so, yeah especially dairy products i think is a is a travesty because yeah. uh, a lot of people of color can't even digest it Mm -hmm. So children of color are being systematically discriminated against yeah. in the school system, you know, by by the industry and by the government pushing dairy products on school children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have, that's have dietary been, racism. Yeah. Have, have you and your family always been vegan or was it after you read about climate change that you decided to go vegan? Yeah, I, I went vegan in 2008 when I saw the impact on the environment. I mean, that was my clincher because I was, all, I was already working on the environment. I had started Climate Healers in 2007 and I was at that point a lacto-vegetarian and I thought that I was not doing much harm because I looked up the scientific 
uh, papers on uh, impact of dairy, and it basically said it's only about you know 10 percent or 15 percent worse than going vegan. And I bought into that analysis initially, and then I went to this forest in Rajasthan, India, and I realized that actually they are doing uh, what is known as a local sensitivity analysis. And if you do a global sensitivity analysis, dairy turns out to be the worst. <laughs> so as soon as I realized it's the absolute worst thing you could be doing, I went vegan on the spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about your family? Was it uh, easy to convince them to become vegan or how did that go? Well, it was uh, initially I said, I'm going vegan. And they said, OK, you can cook for us and we'll eat it, right? So, <laughs> so that's how it started. And I started cooking for my family. And uh, and then as a result, everyone was vegan at home. But then when we go out, people were, you know, my wife was eating and, you know, but uh, uh, she also soon realized that it's, it is in everyone's best interest to go vegan. So she did that a couple of years later, I think, after I did it. And then my children went vegan when they saw a cowspiracy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had, so I've been pouring, you know, resources into documentaries. So we did. We funded Cowspiracy. We gave oh, funds yeah, to... Oh, yeah, that was a wonderful documentary. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That was our, our second documentary that we were executive producers of. We had... Uh, the first one was called The Human Experiment, which oh, is about... Yeah, well, it is... Uh, it's actually the foundation because The Human Experiment is about the chemical pollution of the planet mm -hmm. and how um, the legislative process was subverted in the 50s so that uh, chemical pollution of the planet could be done without any uh, liability by the corporations. So they basically changed it around so that the corporations can do whatever they wanted mm -hmm. and the consumer or the person who got affected by that pollution has to prove that that particular chemical caused them that particular disease. And only then uh, the corporation becomes liable. So anyway, that was uh, one of the first laws that were passed that uh, brought us down this path of destroying the planet, you know. So where can we find that human experience? I mean, cowspiracy is all over, obviously, but the human yeah. experiment, where do we find that? Oh, it's available for viewing on Unchained TV, which is uh, Jane Willis Mitchell has this new uh, TV channel called Unchained TV. Uh, it's an app you can download on your Android. You can download uh, oh, or Roku or, you know, so you can watch it on TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has exclusively uh, exclusive access to the human experiment. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Um, is it a free app or how, like? It's a free app. Yeah. Everything oh, wow. on it is free. Yeah. On Chain TV. And do they have other uh, interesting educational documentaries? Over, well? I think they have over a thousand videos now. It's all, uh, it's all oh free and it's, yeah, and it's basically has its own. So they have, Unchained TV has its own uh, series, TV series as well. So wow, I had no Pig idea. Little Lies, it's called Pig Little Lies. Oh, yeah, yes. it's, I think I've heard of that before, but you know, I don't watch a lot of TV. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> So did you guys also fund Seaspiracy? That was quite good as well. Yeah, well, Seaspiracy, we didn't need to fund because Netflix funded it. So it was oh, Netflix wonderful. original documentary. <laughs> yeah, uh, We did What the Health. So we were oh, executive nice. producers for What the Health. Yeah. And then we did a prayer for compassion. I think I have over, uh, over 10 documentaries now that are. Oh, um, really? Perk yeah. for Compassion? I haven't seen that one either. How? Where can you find Perk for Compassion? Uh, prayer for Compassion can be found on Vimeo for free. I can send you a link to that. You can also. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, that would be great. Yeah. Find it on Amazon Prime. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, Prayer for Compassion is on Amazon Prime. I have Amazon right. Prime. Okay. Yeah. That's great. I mean, sea spiracy, I think a lot of people who eat fish, um, you know, when I first became vegetarian, I became vegetarian when I was a teenager. Mm. Uh, you know, I thought, oh, I'll just eat fish. But I, I stopped eating fish because I got so sick of it because that was all my mother was feeding me. She was so concerned. I wasn't getting enough protein. So every day it was fish, fish, fish. And I was like, I'm not eating this anymore. <laughs> right. You know, but, um, you know, a lot of people, they think that they're doing less harm because they are eating fish. But, you know, there's a lot of... Um, you know, or they think fish is healthier, but I thought Sea Spiracy was a very good documentary about. Right. Yeah. So that was great. But I'm glad you pointed out that, you know, what your mother, your mother thought that you're not getting enough protein, right? That's yeah. the foundational myth from which all this destruction happens because yeah. they have convinced all of us that 
protein is only found in animal products. You know, that's an absolute lie. And they have been lying to children about this. Yeah. And to me, lying to children should be considered a crime against humanity. Yeah. And those who are writing textbooks with lies like that ought to be prosecuted for that, you know? Yeah, I mean, people seem to think, oh, the best source of protein is in, you know, in meat and you can only get complete, um, complete proteins. They have this new term, complete proteins, where it has all the amino acids. You can only get that from meat, but it's actually not true at all. So, right. um, you know. Right, all the essential know, amino acids. Are... up with that, you know. Right. It's, I think it's a carefully built myth in order to promote the industry and therefore promote yeah. diseases and therefore promote pharmaceutical industry, promote hospitals. I mean, there's an entire ecosystem of economic activity that depends on us getting sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so they are sort of playing us, you know? So we've been played yes, for absolutely. centuries, yeah. <laughs> so tell me more about the other documentaries. I'm really interested now. You said you have about 10. Right. So I want to go and see all of them so, because <laughs> I like the first few that I've seen. So you said Prayer for Compassion, What the Health, which I've seen, um, Cowspiracy, and then what other ones have you The had? Human Experiment, I told you, right? The Human, the human Experiment, experiment. Yes. And then uh, there was Milked, which is about the milk industry oh. in, dairy, in New Zealand. Oh, gosh, I have to see that, too. Yeah, Milked. And then there is oh. The End of Medicine. Which is, uh, which is also on Amazon Prime, which is about uh, pandemics and, uh, um, and how medicine as this practice today needs to change. Yes. And then uh, there's one, uh, it's called the, They Are Trying to Kill Us, which is about social <laughs> justice. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that title. <laughs> yeah. So a social justice, it's, it shows that, you know, how uh, people of color are being systematically discriminated against in the food system. Mm -hmm. Um, then we did one called uh, Animals, a Parallel History. It's about the history of uh, animals and how animals have been used by human beings. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, the latest one is called The Land of Ahimsa, oh. which is about India. Mm -hmm. And it is on uh, YouTube right now uh, on the Plant Based oh, News really? Channel. It got released on Thursday and it's doing very well. So, oh, wow. Yeah. It Do appeals to Indians to 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 yeah, reclaim India, our role. Yeah. Country, it's so pop. I mean, it's almost as populated. It's going to take over China. The population is going to be bigger than China. So I think that's great. If all those people, because I know there's, you know, a lot of India is vegetarian, mm. but uh, you know they're not vegan. And actually, um, I. A long time ago when I was in medical school, not that long, but, you know, when I was in medical school, I went to um, do an elective in India and I went to Gujarat. They're a vegetarian state, but, mm -hmm. you know, actually they eat a lot of cheese, uh, you know, ghee and everything. So, and the food is fried and everything. So they actually have a very high rate of heart attacks and everything. I mean, I was right. kind of surprised that they even have that because being vegetarian and everything. But that's when I sort of learned that, you know, but ve being vegetarian is not enough. You really right. have to keep out the high fatty foods and the uh, dairy from your diet. So um, that was actually just an experience I had. But, you know, if you could influence all the people in India, my gosh, that would be great. <laughs> right. India is it's a perfect uh, country to to embrace veganism quickly because uh, Indians eat a lot of dairy, but they don't eat a lot of meat. Yeah. So which means that they they fundamentally have that compassion in them. And they're trying to minimize their harm to the animals, mm -hmm. yeah? but they yeah. think by doing dairy, they're minimizing harm. And then we point out to Indians that actually are maximizing harm by consuming dairy. Yeah. They get shocked, you know, and, yeah. and, and a lot of them are willing to change. So this is what we are hoping will happen because we're appealing to Indians to to take the lead in this transformation, yeah. Because it's a spiritual and cultural transformation that needs to happen, you know. And who better to lead the spiritual transformation than India? Absolutely. And then you think, I mean, if you know, so many people in India did it, then other people would be looking there and think, well, you know, I it, eventually it would. Sh you know, I think it would make a difference in the health of everybody. So they would look at India and say, oh, you know, everybody's health is better there. Maybe right. we need to change something. Although I will say that even with the China study and everything, nothing's really changed about our diet here. But I think people are starting to realize that 
we can use lifestyle medicine and mm -hmm. improve our health, but it's still it's still not ingrained here yet because we're still doing a lot of fixing people up after the fact that they already have a disease. Right. That's that's our pattern, but it, you know it's unfortunate. You know, eventually, I think people are realizing because now even lifestyle medicine, there's more and more people getting boarded and everything. So things are going to change. It's just takes yeah. some time. Takes some time, you know. Well, change can happen very quickly too. You know? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. I mean, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I think the the work you're doing is great. So, um, if you could show us the website, Michael, and his website, yeah, and there's a lot of information on the website actually about climate change, and there's also uh, you have all your movies there. Is that correct? yeah? Uh, we have links to those movies. Oh, I'm going to check and that. there's one movie I didn't mention, which is Countdown to Year Zero, which is I, I wasn't an executive producer of that, but I'm the protagonist. Oh, really? So, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Jane, uh, Jane Wellis Mitchell and uh, Unchained TV did that movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I would I would love to have her on my show. Maybe if you could hook me up. <laughs> yeah, sure. I definitely would be, even I'd be happy. At this age, I think we would like to have, um, we would definitely like to have her as a speaker i mean um but you know we're out of time but thank you so much i really really enjoyed having you as a guest um so we have to wrap it up now uh this is dr grace o'neill this is healthy planet on the think tech live streaming network series we've been talking to dr silish uh, silesh rao of climate healers thanks to michael our broadcast engineer and the rest of the crew at think tech for hosting our show and thanks to you our listeners for listening I'll see you in two weeks for more of Healthy Planet on Think Tech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. My next guest will be Dr. Neil Barnard, the founder of Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. If you have ideas for the show or questions for my future show guests, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at graceinhawaii.com or Instagram at gracefulliving365 for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.